From Animal House in the 80s to the more recent Hangover films. Oh, oh it's like college. Yeah. All right. Pop culture and advertising's depiction of drinking is playing out on college campuses to a much more alarming degree than the toga parties of the past. Yeah, do it. Chug it. These are my friends. And we absolutely love to drink. My name is Nicole Mannion, and I'm a senior here at the University of Notre Dame. This student film on the growing pervasiveness and side effects of drinking could have been produced on most any college campus today. Nearly half of college students say they drink and 30% say they binge drink, according to a recent survey by the National Institute on Drug Abuse and Alcoholism. Here on the campus of the University of Notre Dame, they're taking a more academic and intellectual approach in addition to traditional counseling and disciplinary action. The psychology department is teaming up with the film, television, and theater department on a course that teaches students why they think drinking is so cool and why it's probably not. Societally, uh, people seem to condone your actions because you are drunk. We drunk on Film is a full credit in-person and online course with over 150 students on the wait list each semester. Psychology professor Andre Venter and film and TV professor Ted Mandel lead the students in their critiques of popular films featuring heavy drinking and its social and health consequences. So what we want to focus on and what we like research a little bit into is kind of this effect of, of depre depressed on depressants, obviously since uh, alcohol is a depressant. Along with pop culture favorites, the films include classics like It's a Wonderful Life and even some cartoons the students grew up with, like Beauty and the Beast. Professor Mandel believes film, TV, and advertising have long cultivated the students' acceptance of drinking as part of normal life. Where does total absence fit into this course? Nowhere, nowhere. This course is, to me, is about the ability to look at media and, and entertainment that you've been exposed to since you were two years old and reevaluate it and ask yourself, is this really the narrative of alcohol that's true? Does alcohol really bring me community? And to get students to look at narratives and reevaluate that and then compare that to what they are personally doing in college. Sophomore in the first novel chapter. Co-professor Andre Venter has a PhD in clinical psychology and focuses more on the behavioral aspects of college drinking. Right, it's a social anxiety. But, but you know, and isn't that what we often hear students talk about drinking because of social anxiety? Liquid, yeah. Liquid courage. The professors are careful not to turn the drunk on film class into an intervention or therapy session that would more likely shut down the students rather than open them up for the discussions, which are the key teaching moments. I'm not a licensed therapist. Ted's clearly not a licensed <laughs> therapist, no. And we're not doing therapy in any way, shape, or form. But what we're, I think, getting the students to do is to begin to ask questions as to why. Why do I do it this way? Alcohol changes the relationship between what's called the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and the adrenal. Related podcasts and nonfiction films addressing the health and social consequences of excessive drinking are part of the mix of videos. I wanted to welcome you to tonight's conversation with Holly Whitaker. Guest lecturers have included Holly Whitaker with the New York Times and best-selling author of Quit Like a Woman, which highlights the added health and safety risks for female students drinking heavily on campus. I think that you are um, trained to become a participant in drinking culture. We are trained to drink like this. We're given images and re those images are reinforced our entire lives. That when you go to college, you let loose, you get drunk. How many of you didn't drink in high school? Yes, yes. She and the course take on college traditions, like the football tailgating parties, often hosted by parents and adults, who she believes are often complicit in normalizing excessive student drinking as socially acceptable. The phrase, you can't be an alcoholic while you're in college, is very common. People have heard that around here. Aidan Joel and Ada Bittner 
took the class last year and are now teaching assistants. Yeah, so we watched one called The Spectacular Now, which has Miles Teller as um, the main actor, and he plays a character called Sutton. And it's really just about his relationship with alcohol and his story, and you kind of see it gradually progress where you don't really think his drinking is a problem, and then as you kind of go through the film, you see that he becomes just increasingly dependent on it, and it really affects all aspects of his life. I was drinking freshman year, and then after that, started to kind of become curious as to whether or not not drinking would be something that would fit into my own self-concept. As a social psychologist, you know, we think that human behavior is a function of both the person and their environment. And often the environment is a more powerful predictor of behavior than the person's disposition. I think the one thing when we started this class that truly surprised me was not that students drink in college, but the level of drinking that is normalized. What is considered normal right now, I would never even think it would have crossed my mind when I was an undergraduate. Because so much of college life today is based on drinking, many students taking the course believe alcohol has taken on an oversized role in socializing on campus at the expense of other activities. If you say one of the premises of the course is that media has caused this new acceptance of, of a moral standard that probably doesn't really work for these kids. Can media also correct it? Yeah, look at cigarettes. I mean, cigarettes for decades and decades were pushed on audiences as being socially, you know, desirable. And then that narrative has changed. How many of you really didn't drink at all until you went to college. There are no solid metrics for gauging the course's success in curbing alcohol abuse on campus. But if the student's final exam, in the form of a personal essay, is any indication, professors Mandel and Venter are confident they're on the right track. So as I started thinking about all those things, I realized that we really all do have a relationship with alcohol, um, whether your choice is one way or the other. And even just with my family and friends and all those different connections, I think it really does affect a lot of different parts of your lives, whether you realize, realize it or not. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Saray in South Bend, Indiana.